Hi, I'm Evangelos Kalajorakis, and I will present Building Map. This is a joint work between UMass, University of Cyprus, and Adobe Research. Our project had two goals. Our first goal was to offer to our community a large data set of 3D building models with consistently labeled exterior parts. Specifically, we offer 2,000 building models in the form of polygon meshes, which contain 510 K labeled mesh components corresponding to geometric primitives used by modelers while designing the meshes. Our second goal was to develop a neural network called Building GNN that takes as input a 3D mesh, optionally with texture, and labels building parts such as roof, wall, chimney, window, and so on, with as few mistakes as possible. So why bother with buildings? Current 3D shape datasets such as ShapeNet and ParkNet mostly deal with small scale objects with relatively simple structure and few number of geometric primitives. For example, the average number of triangle groups corresponding to such primitives is 24 in ParkNet, while in our dataset, it is 25 times larger. Our paper pushes 3D deep learning to larger scale objects with more complex structure. Another motivation is the multitude of applications related to labeling 3D buildings. Structure-aware generative models of 3D urban geometry and texture are becoming increasingly useful in graphics and virtual worlds. Labeled parts can also facilitate style-related analysis of buildings. Then synthetic building datasets may also be useful to train or pre-train 3D urban recognition pipelines. Creating our dataset was not easy. Inexperienced human workers can easily mislabel domain-specific parts, such as domes or buttresses. On the other hand, hiring experts, such as architects, to label thousands of buildings would be time-consuming and costly. Another complication which affects human and machine annotation is that building messes are non-watertight with tens of thousands of polygons. It is hard to label polygons one by one or draw segmentation boundaries on them. An observation that can help us here is that building messes often have useful metadata, such as groups of polygons corresponding to geometric primitives used during modeling, such as the ones that you see on the right. These groups can simplify human annotation and may improve machine annotation. One last challenge is that building parts often vary a lot in terms of size, even within the same building, such as the domes that you see here. They can also vary a lot in terms of geometry and texture across models. I will now discuss our human annotation pipeline. First, we mined several thousands of 3D models from the 3D warehouse repository. We performed various quality checks to remove models with too few polygons, groups, and no texture. We corrected geometry problems, including reorienting the normals and removing the generate polygons from the masses. We also removed interiors through ray casting, since our goal was to label building exteriors. We then performed a small scale study involving architects to label a small set of our buildings and find the most common labels they use. 31 such labels were identified, as visualized here, creating our target label set. Our next step was to find human workers capable of performing this task. After worker training and evaluation, we picked only reliable workers from Mechanical Turk. Then we started to gather annotations using our interface. Here is how our interface looks like. On the left, the building components or polygon groups are highlighted. Unlabeled ones are shown in shades of green and yellow. On the right, the same model was shown with texture to provide cues for labeling. On the top left, we have instructions, and the top right shows the current label to be used along with tutorial links. Users can annotate parts according to the shown label by just clicking on a component, such as the door piece here, which acquires the dark red color corresponding to doors. They can proceed with labeling other pieces of door. Now, due to the fact that many components are repeated in buildings, such as door pieces here, we offer the functionality of detecting such duplicates to enable faster labeling. Users can also control the viewpoint. They may proceed with other labels sequentially, such as wall, 
to label any such wall components. Alternatively, they can see the whole label set and directly pick the label they want. For example, the label columns here. For more details on our user interface, please see our supplementary video. To gather our massive data set, workers annotated in parallel. Each building was labeled by five different workers so that we can achieve consensus on the final labeling. When the majority of workers did not agree on the label of a component, we rejected it. As a result, our buildings are partially labeled, yet the labeled area is above 70% most of the time. Our dataset and benchmarks offer a training, validation, and test plate in a proportion 80, 10, 10%. The right column here shows the total number of labeled components, or in other words, polygon groups per split. Our dataset offers four tracks. Our first track includes only point clouds of buildings, specifically 100K points sampled per building, as you see here. This track is supposed to test algorithms without access to any kind of mesh structure and also no colors. To train and evaluate algorithms, we offer per point labels. As a starting leaderboard in this track, we tested PointNet++, a recent OCHTRI-based network, and the sparse tensor network called Minskonsky net. Our evaluation includes shape IU and as shown here, part IU. Our second track includes the same point clouds, but this time with RGB color, sampled from the model texture. Not surprisingly, the performance of all networks improves with access to color. Our third track tests algorithms operating on triangle meshes without texture. Algorithms here can exploit the mesh connectivity information as well as the polygon group structure. The fourth track tests algorithms operating on meshes, including texture. For the last two mesh tracks, we tested various baselines. One simple baseline is to first sample points on the mesh, then use point networks such as PointNet++ or Mitskorsky Net to extract per point descriptors. Then we aggregate these descriptors for each triangle. The aggregation is performed by using max pooling on the descriptors of points belonging to each triangle to extract per triangle descriptors. Then we employ an MLP and a classification layer to label each triangle on the mesh. We transfer point descriptors to triangles using the architectures that we used in the point cloud tracks, yet the performance remains low. The part I use is close to 30% for the best performing network. Another baseline is to transfer descriptors from points to groups of triangles, which correspond to larger geometric primitives in the mesh. Here we find all points belonging to each triangle group and then perform max pooling on their descriptors to extract a descriptor per group used for classification. Since the aggregation of point descriptors happens over primitives larger than triangles, the labeling performance is improved for all architectures, in particular, the one based on Minskonsky net. Still, can we do better than these baselines? We developed a graph-based neural network called Building GNN that does better. Let me explain its architecture. The input to our network is the mesh, including its group metadata, and also its point-based representation, optionally with texture. We use Minskowski net to extract point descriptors, then perform max pooling for each group. For example, let me highlight a few groups in this mesh and within this area. There is a triangle group, first of all, forming the base of the column, shown in the dotted oval. Now we start creating a graph. Each group is represented by a node. Here is another group, the shaft of the column, represented by another node. This is one more group and the corresponding node for the base of the other column, and another one for its shaft. A piece of the wall is another node. Our next step is to extract pairwise relations between all these nodes capturing structure information. For example, we have support relations captured as directed edges since the base supports the shaft of the column See the paper on details how to extract these relations. We have different types of edges, for example, similarity edges capturing repetitions or symmetries between parts. For example, the bases of the columns and their shafts are similar. We have proximity edges capturing spatially nearby groups, such as the column groups and the wall here. We have other edges capturing more relations. See the paper for more details. 
the descriptors we extracted for each group can now serve as the initial row representation of the nodes in our structural graph. We perform neural message passing in this graph, which produces node descriptors that are context aware and structure aware. Each of these descriptors are used to output a label per group. Our network results in an improvement of part IU close to 7% for the untextured mesh track and about 5.5% for the mesh track. Here are a few qualitative results of labelings for test meshes produced by building GNNM. Many parts such as walls, roofs, windows, columns are often recognized correctly. To summarize, I presented the first large scale publicly available 3D building dataset with annotated parts in addition to a benchmark along with a graph neural network that leverages pre-existing mesh group metadata to improve labeling performance. Automatically extracting geometric primitives to form a structural graph is a worthwhile future direction. Our project website includes code, the current version of the dataset, and will include any future improvements to it. Here are our acknowledgements. Thank you very much.